Here's a big headline for you, but you wouldn't know it because the New York Times buried it in yesterday's paper. During the occupation of Iraq, the CIA purchased and destroyed chemical weapons from a secret Iraqi seller. They bought them so that the terrorists wouldn't get their hands on them. Judy Miller joins us now. All right, Judy, you brought this, uh, this uh, headline to our attention. Right. And we, we would have missed it. Well, everyone would have missed it, Stuart, because but, but this is, this it was on A4 of the New York Times but on a holiday. it's weapons of mass destruction. Of course it is. We, did, we were told that they didn't have any of these weapons of mass destruction. Absolutely. This completely turns the story around. Right. And, well, it does. And so did the earlier report by the same reporter, which did appear on the front page last year. But, you know, now well, we've reported it, move along. The amazing thing about these weapons is that there were 400 purchased from a single supplier. We don't know how much was paid. We don't know who the supplier was. We don't know how he got them. We don't know where the others are. We know that the Iraqis were said to have made, they reported to the UN that they made up to 18,000 of these weapons. We purchased 400 in this secret CIA program. And what it was sarin gas? Sarin gas, which is one of the most potent nerve agents known to man, and the purity of them was much higher than expected. Normally, you would have 4 to 8 percent purity if something had been in the ground or hidden for so many years. But this purity, in one instance, was up to 25 and was at least 10 percent in some of, the, some of these weapons now, that were uncovered. Th these weapons were found and bought by right. the CIA back right. in what, 05, 06? 05, 06, and uh, I love the name, Operation Avarice. Avarice. <laughs> but why didn't the Bush administration make this known? You know, they the, were heavily criticized for invading Iraq and there were no weapons of mass destruction, and then they found them. Well, Karl Rove, in his really interesting memoir, reports that he advised the president to just move away, you know, that the intelligence fiasco disaster of mis telling the American people that we were going to find really really sophisticated WMD as opposed to the kind that will just kill mass numbers of people, that that was a terrible political minus for him and he should just move along and move away from that issue. And Karl Rove now says that that was the biggest mistake he made during his time in the White House. My goodness me. You remember, the, you remember the cult Aum Shinrikyo? Aum Shinrikyo, I remember it very, very well. They were the <laughs> ones who planted sarin gas in the Tokyo subway system. That's right, they did, and, and many people were killed, and many yeah. more were wounded. This is, this is a really potent weapon, and had the Iraqis used it or given it to terrorists who could use it, many, many people would but be dead. But Saddam Hussein yes. used it in Iran and on the Kurds. Guess he, yes. he didn't yes. use yes. sarin that we know of. He used other, other chemical agents, chemical, but yes, right. he did, and it was part of the reason that President Bush cited for war, and that was accurate. So, too, was Iraq's failure to account for what they claimed was the destruction of weapons that they gave no proof that Which they destroyed. Which intelligence estimates dated back to the Clinton administration were, were warning Everyone about, right? Everyone believed that. They Saddam, were right all along. Right, exactly. They were there. Yeah. All right, Judy, thank you very much.